Cadillac Planning Commission meeting here at 7 o'clock, Monday, November 23, 2015. Uh, if I could uh, please make sure everybody has their cell phones off so it doesn't interfere with the videotaping, please. And then I'll ask everyone to join me for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Start off with roll call, please. Mike? Wilkins. Here. Champlin. Van Lente. Smith. Here. Peterson. Here. Schuchtel. Here. Greg. Here. Fent. Putvin. Here. Thank you. Hopefully everyone, uh, so I need an approval here for the um, meeting minutes here for October 26, 2015. I'll make a motion to approve. Spoken, seconded. That's support. Mr. Schichtel. Roll, please. Greg? Yes. Smith? Yes. Schichtel? Yes. Champlin? Van Lente? Fent? Peterson? Here. Philkins? Yes. Putfin? Yes. Thank you. Next this evening, I just need approval here for uh, this evening's agenda, again for November 23rd, 2015. I move we approve the agenda. I'll second it. Mr. Schichtel, Mr. Smith. Bent. Silkins. Yes. Champlin. Schichtel. Yes. Smith. Yes. Peterson. Here. Van Lente. Greg. Yes. Futfin. Yes. Thank you. Under old business this evening. Hopefully everyone in the audience had a chance to go over what we also got to go over. Anyway, we are having a public hearing this evening here on the proposed amendment to the City of Cadillac Zoning Ordinance, which would add a mixed plan unit development zoning district. Having read that, turn this over to staff, please. Yes, uh, pursuant to uh, the recommendation in the uh, master plan um, with respect to uh, the Terry D project, uh, the only way forward on that project was going to be as a mixed-use uh, project. And rather than write the zoning specific to that project, we opted to write a general zoning district for the city zoning ordinance, which would... Uh, allow for a mixed plan unit development at uh, any number of locations that would meet the uh, requirements. Uh, so that would be the avenue for Terry D, but it might also be the avenue for some number of other projects as well. And so uh, it's uh, an amendment that would be a text amendment that would just create a new district for the city zoning ordinance, uh, which uh, people with development interests could take advantage of, uh, much like they do any of the other zoning districts, only in this case uh, it does have the added element that it is a planned unit development, uh, which is what was uh, suggested in the uh, master plan preparation process. Uh, with respect to the ordinance itself, it, it relies heavily on some of the existing ordinance, for instance on uh, existing on uh, the permitted uses. Uh, it relies on the lists that are currently in the city zoning ordinance, uh, city zoning ordinance. Uh, two areas that it uh, prohibits, there would be no adult uses uh, permitted in this district and there would be no industrial uses in this district. But other than that, it, uh, it stated in the uh, proposed amendment that it would rely on the lists that are comprised of uh, many of the city's other uh, existing commercial and tourist-oriented uh, commercial districts. Uh, so it 
it outlines a process uh, both for an initial sketch plan which basically lays out most of what a developer would be intending to do in terms of uses, uh, setbacks, positioning of the development, uh, topography, um, all but just the most real detailed type information. So you really would have a sense during the uh, sketch plan exactly what is being proposed. And during that process there would be uh, a public hearing uh, held when somebody were to uh, propose a project as part of this, uh, this district requirement. And that uh, would also require both Planning Commission and City Council approval. In the secondary phase, since most of the key issues would be settled during the sketch plan process, uh, there wouldn't be the public hearing requirement on the final plan because it would be down to more detail-oriented uh, type information like what exact fixture type might be selected or something of that nature. So that's kind of the essence. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you want to add a few comments. Nope, I think you captured it. Wonderful. Um, should I open up possibly questions for yourself uh, and or Mike from audience before I open public hearing or go ahead and open public hearing and you field all the questions? What, what do you feel will, will be the smoothest way of operation? My suggestion, yep. um, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, would be to open up the public hearing okay. uh, and to take the input uh, from anybody um, that we might have any. Uh, and then depending upon um, how the commission would like us to respond or not respond, we can, we can do it at that point. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. So at this time, we'll go ahead and open the uh, public hearing uh, pertaining, and, and hopefully you all got to read this like I did this weekend. So good stuff. <laughs> I had to reread it a lot, of, but but anyway. So if anybody has anything to say, if you uh, come forwards, uh, good. There's a paper and pen there to write down. Just name and address so you don't have to say all that um, at the podium. And then we'll either go from ourselves or staff to assist in your questions. Standing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I said sitting down and not writing my name here, huh? There, well, please. <clears throat> I think I'll get a rubber stamp made. I basically I thought the document was pretty good. I, uh, I like you, I've read it several times. I, I did have one suggestion, uh, only only because uh, maybe not in this case. Maybe in this case you do know the property involved and everything. But when things like this come up as a planning commission, you have to rely on the drawings you're given to make your decisions. In most cases, you don't always go out and look at the property. And I, I had a suggestion that under section 46-657, that's the application procedure and approval process. Uh, under B, there are 12, 12 things listed. And, and I would recommend that you, that, that you add a 13th. And, and that is that, that any sketch should also show any uh, uh, current structures that are adjacent to this property within a certain distance. I would recommend 300 feet, but you know, just just in case, that would prevent you from from okaying something like, for example, and this is outrageous, but for example, somebody wanted to put a six foot wind tower in on the edge of their property line, and there was a home. 30 feet away from it, you don't do that because it could topple over and land on the house. And you wouldn't know that if you didn't know that there's a, there was an existing structure next to there. So I think, I think that, that probably the sketch should include more than just the property involved and more than just the highways, whatever. Other, other than that, I, uh, I, I didn't, didn't find too much to disagree with. Uh, uh, I think it's a pretty good draft. I'd say a lot from you. 
<laughs> I'm not disagreeable today. <laughs> All right. Thank you, George. <laughs> Anyone else this evening? Any comments? Hi. Yeah. Right. I came in to speak a couple times when I was at the township level. I live in uh, Pointy Subdivision, so I'm directly close to that. And um, your I, name, please. Lynn Galexon. Thank you. Lynn. Yeah, born and raised in Cadillac, graduated from Cadillac, came back to Cadillac to retire, and now very disappointed. And you know, this, this whole the this whole system has just been laughable. And somebody's comment in the paper about you're not hearing complaints. I think a lot is falling on deaf ears. People are basically giving up. But as I had to go around a different path because there was a collision on the overpass coming here, I'm wondering what thoughts are being given to traffic flow. You know, you're coming up with a plan that might be the Cadillac master plan that disagrees with the Wexford County master plan. But um, my understanding is there were two areas that were designated for this kind of um, business, businesses, and then both of those interchanges, you have five lanes of traffic to, you know, be able to get around. The overpass in this area is two lanes. What plans are being given to, is that going to be the developer that makes that a five-lane overpass? Um, the other traffic, anybody, maybe you folks don't travel on Crosby Road much, but to get out of Crosby Road right now, you put this kind of traffic on the other side of the expressway. You're just asking for more accidents and trouble. There were two areas that were specifically designated years ago that could handle this kind of business. And to put it here, instead of a residential, which was originally zoned, I just don't understand. And I don't think that there's any document that's going to fix that. Thank you. Thank you, Len. Anyone else this evening, any comments pertaining more to the zoning, but that's okay. No? Staff, any responses to what's been said or okay with stuff? Uh, one comment, uh, it's not unusual in zoning ordinances, even in non-PUDs to uh, at times have um, an occlusion of uh, structures within a certain distance. So uh, that's definitely something that I think it makes sense to take a look at and determine uh, what that distance should be uh, and so forth. Because uh, usually those structures can be picked up uh, readily, uh, easily when the developer is out, uh, you know, handling their own property and doing their development plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I can simply add, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, regarding traffic impacts, depending upon overall density, MDOT will likely commission a study or require one gets commissioned uh, that will perhaps address questions such as uh, traffic control devices or solutions such as traffic control devices um, whether they're automated or, or something else, uh, reconfiguration of lanes. It's a little too premature at this point in stage to, to know what would actually be required and how and when. Um, but that is a part of a process that eventually would, would be vetted. So once we're, we have an application, then would MDOT be made aware of that and then they would have their input before anything even gets started? Um, MDOT would be made aware of the overall development and the site plan, uh, but they themselves may not even be um, uh, engaged in doing a study until such time that they know that certain pieces of the development are, are actually going to even happen. Uh, and, and they're going to need to have that data uh, from whomever the property owner is or the developer is in order to be able to ascertain whether or not 
you know, a, a traffic light or a lane reconfiguration or some improvements to the intersections are going to even, you know, be required, and if so, how? Uh, I, I simply just don't know what the exact timing for that will be, but I know that at this point there just isn't the right. data to, to even have that discussion. So. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Any anyone else this evening? Good evening. Good evening. Um, I know we know you, but maybe everyone else knows. <laughs> Uh, my name is Nate Swiger. I live at 10534 Pine Grove Drive, um, directly across from from uh, the area that this amendment includes. Um, one thing I'd like to bring up, and uh, was a Cadillac News article. It was in a paper here a few weeks ago um, called "No Place to Call." Yeah, no place to call home. It was in the paper on the 30th of, of October. And uh, city officials and industry leaders were quoted in that article as saying the lack of quality, affordable housing is keeping young professionals from moving to the area. It is really hard to get professionals and young people to come here, and it has a huge impact on the community. We need clean, affordable housing or we'll stagnate. Not one mention of a new gas station, a big box store, or a conference center was made in keeping people from moving here. It was quality, affordable housing. This area is currently zoned R1, residential. I say we keep it that way. And if industry leaders and community officials are saying we need housing, I think we really need to look at that. You know, And, and uh, just one more question in, came to my mind. Who is more important when it comes to the casual tourist passing through town or young people with, you know, possibly families making Cadillac their home and investing in the community by raising their families here. You know, are we looking for long-term people, you know, to, to attract long-term people and possible residents to, you know, to, to raise their families here? Or are we looking just to capture the tourists that's going to be in town for an hour or so and they're on down the road and, you know, Cadillac was nothing more than a memory. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else this evening? Before I close public hearing. No? Staff okay? Okay. This time we'll just we will close public hearing. Um, again, I guess I didn't really hear a lot of negative. And again, this is just a, a zoning thing to get in place. Um, Cadillac Junction could could be part of this zoning, but as <coughs> Mr. Wallace mentioned, there's other places too that that may come on board with this new zone. Um, so. It, time tonight I don't know um, a lot of wasn't a lot of negative uh, you guys did a good job on laying this out I think John and Mr. Omir Thank you. yes sir Marcus um, Mr. Chair if I could just just summarize a little bit sure, I think, please you know I think that that you said it really point on which is the Planning Commission is looking at uh, putting in place a new layer within its zoning code um, this new code amendment will provide this, the city, through the Planning Commission and the City Council, the ability to accept applications, whether it's from the Terry D company or any property owner or development company that can meet the land criteria to be able to apply for that, that zoning <laughs> application. It'll provide with that opportunity, with that ability to then take an application and start going through um, a robust site plan process. Um, as was mentioned earlier this evening, the uh, establishment of the master plan 
specifically in the land use identification for the parcel off of M55 was for mixed use land use. In addition to that, the Planning Commission identified that it would require a development agreement no matter who might be the company or a person or persons trying to develop that site, whenever that happens to be. But in order for the Planning Commission to actually be able to do that and to require this developer agreement, you have to have your zoning code in sync. And that, that's what this process here is for tonight. Um, I mean, there could be a million and one different uh, concepts and ideas talked about with respect to how to best develop that site, but that's we're not there yet. You know, we don't we don't have an application on file yet. We're not we're not ready to do that. This is the sort of intermediate step before we get to that. Point. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Thank you. Yep. Board, any comment? I have a couple of questions. Um, so what's the, if this is approved, the process, there's a, uh, like a primary site plan that comes in to us, and that can be all-inclusive or partial, uh, and then there's a public hearing on that part of it, and, that, and then as things come along, we no longer have a public hearing, we just go through and, and prove or disapprove different situations that come to us along the way. I don't, can you run through the process that could happen or how it would happen with this uh, amendment? One of you. Are we flipping? <laughs> <laughs> There's, so, the process that's envisioned is, um, it's a concurrent two-step process. So um, the first is um, the sketch plan and the rezoning, which happens concurrently with each other. They are two separate documents, but for all intents and purposes, the same. Um, one is going to request rezoning to this mixed-use development site, and then you would have the sketch plan submitted with it. The sketch plan is going to give you a lot of the detail about the site itself. Um, so even though it's called a sketch plan, it is really sort of like a preliminary approval. Um, preliminary approval gives you the ability then to submit a final approval. The final approval should be a construction drawing um, of what the sketch plan is proposing. It's that later drawing that isn't so much important to other than to confirm what the Planning Commission uh, may have seen with respect to the sketch plan. So the, the real um, meat of the application is going to be that sketch plan. And then... And there's a public hearing for that? There's a public hearing. The public hearing is concurrent with the rezoning request. You'd have to have one on that anyways. But they're going to happen simultaneously. So yes, there is public there, could o there might only be one public hearing for, for the whole thing unless they come with partial sketches along the way? They could do there likely will be only, depending on how it's done, I don't want to um, lay out a process that a developer might choose to go down um, or in terms of the process, but assume that you have, just for discussion purposes, you've got an um, application to rezone to the MPUD plus the sketch plan approval. The sketch plan approval can be the whole entire site broken up into phases in which case you could approve not only the rezoning um, and the sketch plan with that phasing, or they may, and they may just focus on, say, one area in which they're going to rezone and get sketch plan approval for one certain area, okay? So I think it's more likely the case that you're going to have a petition to rezone the entire parcel to MPUD with a sketch plan, and if phasing is involved, specific phasing as part of that sketch plan. And in that case, you wouldn't have additional public hearings. If it's the former of those where you only have rezoning of a small portion of the subject property, um, and one phase for that as part of the MPUD designation, then you would have additional public hearings um, to rezone that additional acreage as you went through a phasing process. But if they do the whole thing and, they, and still have phases in there, there's no more public hearing after the first one. Correct. As long as, and, and that gets back to the 
sketch plan versus the final plan approval because the final plan approval are just construction drawings that should mirror the sketch plan absent some unique circumstance like you know you've surveyed the property now and it's 10 feet off so you got to move a building 10 feet or you got to but it, th those changes should be immaterial to the overall plan and ju just perhaps to add a little more what Mike just said in the ordinance uh, it says the sketch site plan shall be drawn to scale fully dimensioned and fulfilled show the following and then it goes through the list of the the dozen criteria the one that Mr. Gift the list that Mr. Gift us mentioned earlier and there's also a provision in here that the request for changes in the plan if it if it becomes a washout it's not doable then the sketch plan is you know has to be resubmitted and that's item H under that as well so yeah so you know the between the sketch plan and the final plan there should be what I would call um, immaterial changes if there are significant and material changes then it may require a resubmission of the sketch plan Good. John under the section uh, where it talks about sec setback variations um, there's two subsections there and I think which one are you on uh, it's on page uh, yeah. three they where they talk one, about setback, oh, no, setback, setback variations. One John here, so where does yeah, this? I just <laughs> so it's <laughs> section <laughs> four six 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 five, item B. And there's subsections one and two, and it wasn't quite clear what the intent of those are, if they're really needed. They seem to be limiting, but very address a very limited circumstance and I was so um, the setback variation may depend upon um, certain aspects of the property so I'll give you an example although we keep talking about um, the Cadillac Junction development mm -hmm. um, Cadillac Junction w is more what I'll define as more rural as it is um, urban right yep. So if you had a site out there, your setbacks may be different than what you might require if you had a site that wanted to go to MPUD, say, down in the downtown core of city of Cadillac. Right. And we wanted to draft this um, amendment generally so that the city could utilize it in the future for either Cadillac Junction or some other variation of an MPUD, even if it were to happen in the downtown core of, of the city. So this allows the Planning Commission um, to look at the setbacks that are otherwise required and adjust those as needed based on those. Yeah, but, but I see it's not that section B, it's the subsections one and two that I'm wondering what the purpose of those are. It seems to limit the Planning Commission's ability to adjust those setbacks yeah so number one says a setback reduction not to exceed 50 percent mm -hmm. so you're right the Planning Commission is restricted um, to a 50 percent reduction in the otherwise required setback um, the, yeah the, re the reason for that limitation is that under ordinary circumstances that setback is seen as a realistic setback requirement that would fulfill good development requirements and Mike's pointed out that there's some cases where you might want to vary from that slightly uh, but you would never want to throw it entirely out there you know if you're going to have a, a commercial building next to a residential structure you wouldn't want to then not hamstring the Planning Commission to allow them to move that building right up next to the line and dramatically Wait. impact that so that's why there's a limitation because if you say the Planning Commission can relax the standard by 50 percent that's quite quite a bit of a relaxation but that's it doesn't talk about residential it's only talking about commercial and that's why I thought those two subsections are kind of <laughs> it, it doesn't so number w number one deals with commercial right and so where you have an MPUD that abuts a commercial district, you can reduce the setback uh, no more than 50% of that otherwise required. You can cut the setback in half. 
if the Planning Commission wants some additional um, leeway, we can write that in there. Um, well, I, I don't see the need for two, those two subsections at all. One okay. Two. So um, the reason why those are differentiated is because when you're dealing with commercial butted up next to commercial, that may require a, or may require, may dictate that you would say, well, we don't need a hundred foot setback. We only need 50 between commercial uses. Why? Because they're commercial uses. As opposed to a commercial use next to a residential use, which is addressed in subsection 2. And in that case, you can increase the setbacks otherwise required, but no more than twice the distance otherwise required. So it allows you flexibility both ways, either to cut it in half or to increase it by two in order to protect those adjacent uses, whatever they might be. But and subsection and B gives us the right to reduce or increase. So these two sections seem limiting to me, especially the, the last line where it talks about, uh, you know, the, where you can't uh, have more than two times the distance that would be required in the zoning district. So section one and two are to deal with what we call unfettered discretion. Okay, unfettered <laughs> discretion in the context of zoning, not a good thing, um, because an applicant even then wonders what the standards are. So imagine, if you will, you say, well, it's a commercial on commercial development. Uh, we're not. We're going to lower the setback requirement by. We're not going to require any setback. And the next applicant, you say, well, we're going to require 50% or 75% or allow a 75% reduction. Unfettered discretion without any guiding standards or principles is not favored under the law. So yes, there are some base restrictions in this, in one and two. They are designed to give you some sense of guidance on what variation that may be. Now. I'm not necessarily stuck on these, um, but I would, I would tell you that I think these standards in terms of limiting function are reasonable. I've got a point on uh, the same area that we're indicating uh, uh, state trunk lines and uh, United States highways. Uh, that uh, maybe you should uh, clarify it uh, beyond the, the right-of-ways of these facilities because these right-of-ways will change from one place to another. Section section one, I think it was. Or no, uh, yes, six fifty-five. Uh, a subsection one, the same one that uh, Greg was. Uh, that that's speaking to a landscape buffer. There's there's two concepts in terms of setback. There's a setback that you have to follow before you can have any kind of pavement, uh, and that would be the landscape buffer. That's the minimum required width of the landscape belt that's needed next to the state highway. So nothing will be in that except landscaping, screening, fencing. Uh, there will be no pavement, no parking, no building. No, you know, the only thing that could be in there is the access aisles into the development. Now beyond the landscape buffer, then you have the building setback. And it might be much deeper than the landscape buffer. And I agree with you in what you're saying, but I, if you make reference to the right-of-way line, uh, to me it uh, clarifies the situation. And that would imply to uh, that um, that setback requirement is not measured from the right-of-way line. It's measured from the property line of the subject property, so that the subject property that's adjacent to a state trunk highway, from that line back into the site, for instance under A1, would be 40 feet. Not necessarily 
where the right-of-way line is or could be. So in some circumstances where you have roadways, you have right-of-way lines that may extend into property by way of, say, a county road, for example, where somebody might own to the center line of a county road, that's not necessary. It's, it's their property, but subject to an easement for the right-of-way. Yes, I'm fully aware of that, and that applies with the, hi uh, the highway. And that uh, right-of-way can vary from uh, 60 feet to 75 feet in that way, or even 100 feet. And uh, I think that if you want to hold that buffer into the, uh, away from that uh, easement, that easement goes as long and uh, you can, the highway department can come in and uh, uh, widen the strip and uh, destroy a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, is, uh, that is still an easement. I don't have I don't have any issue um, clarifying that that's from the uh, road right of way. Um, it should probably be the road right of way or the property line, whichever is greater. Well, the property line uh, and right of way line do not always. And I. I think what you would want it to be is from the right-of-way line. If you had, um, if you have the, uh, the right-of-way line as the basis, again, I don't, I don't have any issue with that, um, putting that provision in there, in for one, two, and three, as it, apl as it applies to those setbacks. I think in most cases, um, we're going to be using the same number, but I don't have a problem with that amendment. Uh, subsection 5 and would be the same comment. Yes. I think probably uh, 1 through actually 1 through 5 probably the same. Some of the rest of them are dealing with buildings, not the highway. Yeah. Um, But if you were to base it on, if I understand this correct, if you were to base it from the road right away, you're losing ground, right? Meaning because you're starting way out there is your 40-foot buffer? Or if I, am I understanding what he's... Only, only when you have the uh, road right of way encroaching into property. So yes, that could be. I mean, if you have 20 feet of the property that's subject to an easement, road right of way, then you're looking at 60 feet into the property. That's correct. Okay. So would it be better to go with road right of way or property line, whichever is greater, which you said earlier? It depends on what you want to achieve. So if, if for instance, you're, um, if you want a 40-foot buffer from the road or the potential where the road could be, because in some cases that's not the paved portion of the road, um, then you would use the road right-of-way of that, as that definitive line. The, the problem with that, of course, is that that road may never expand, and so you're eating up additional buffer area into the property <coughs> from a road right-of-way that may never actually okay. get paved. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, should this be modified or not based on not knowing what MDOT may or may not require? In, I would say in most cases, particularly when um, we're dealing with uh, state trunk highways and interstate highways, we're talking about the property line being adjacent to or um, existing at the road right of way. So that in most cases, State trunk highways and road right of ways will be adjacent to these properties. They are not subject to, they're not easements, they're fees in most cases. There may be some that are out there. When you're talking about county roads, however, there are a lot of county roads that are easement roads where people own to the center line of the county road. 
Now, the county road right of way probably has little impact on the city because the city owns all of its own streets. Um, and I haven't, I, I don't know whether or not the city, the city likely, well, I shouldn't say that. I'm not sure how many streets the city has where your road right of way extends into property owned by the property owner adjacent to the road. Probably not many because most of the roads that are laid out as part of the city are laid out as 66 foot fee roads as opposed to uh, easement roads. I'm not saying it can't happen, um, but, but it's rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, George. One comment, John. What happens, and this is a question for you, what happens if MDOT puts in a deceleration lane and widens the road, and that deceleration lane is on that side of the, of the road, now where does the, where does the property line or the right-of-way line, which, what happens? So when we're talking about site plan review, those <coughs> things that will, like in the case of MDOT, those things are going to be dealt with at, as part of site plan review. But to the extent that there's a deceleration lane, that's either going to occur on the property of the um, applicant or more likely within the road right-of-way ex existing at the time. So I, I can't tell you in terms of every hypothetical instance what, where that buffer is going to be. The intention is to provide 40 feet of landscape buffer where other than roads for ingress and egress, which is what's, um, which is what's required, no other pavement will be located in that buffer. No parking, no buildings, no, no anything. And still, and the, buffer. the same uh, comment would refer to section F, parking and circulation. It could be re referred to the highway right away. You see, the rights that you mentioned involve public streets and alleys. It should include the highway rights away. Um, as part of the uh, sketch plan, is that what you're talking about? I'm sorry. Um, no, we're on F under uh, H4. Yeah, it's show, showing all highway rights of way as part of the sketch plan. Is that mm -hmm. the comment? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 There's one other section in uh, It's a subsection of this uh, parking and, situa uh, and circulation. Uh, I would add a, a subsection L uh, and refer to stormwater runoff. Should require uh, the sketches indicating what well, the uh, disposition of the stormwater be for this parcel. Yeah, we're looking for it. So it would be for this parcel, any parcel. Any parcel, yeah. Yeah, not just that. So under um, under the requirements for uh, sketch plan, well, there's multiple places where it's required. Um, so I I'm not sure I agree that um, we need to um, add a subsection L there. There are a number of different um, provisions regarding um, stormwater. Um, let me give them to you.
I think I found only one other place. So under uh, section 46-657, under the application procedure and approval process, um, there's under B, the site or the sketch site plan shall be drawn to scale, fully dimensioned, and shall clearly show the following information. Uh, one of those under paragraph 5 is the overall water supply system, wastewater system, and stormwater drainage system, including any connections to public facilities. Yep. So mentioned under section I. I think that uh, it does, uh, that's fine, that, I don't think uh, it covers the whole situation. I think uh, that your entire site plan needs to show where your the distribution of your uh, storm run runoff. That is the yeah, that's the basis of the sketch plan itself. I mean, that is the site plan. So the sketch plan, both the both the sketch plan and the final plan, have to show what the applicant is doing with stormwater. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments from board? If we uh, make another final draft of this at some point, can we put page numbers on it? Yes, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. I've got mine already written out. Sure, I thought mine was the only one that didn't have it. I could <laughs> May I second that motion? Good yeah. request, yes. <laughs> Agreed. Um, There's also, just, just to um, follow up on the... Um, on the comment regarding um, stormwater, there's also a provision under, let me get to it, um, uh, 46.656, subparagraph B. I think we need to be uh, concerned with the stormwater runoff because it, the city doesn't have a storm sewer system out in that area and your uh, disposal of additional runoff from that area has to be handled someplace. Yeah, so paragraph C um, refers to utilities and other infrastructure and says public water, sanitary sewer, storm drainage facilities and streets shall be provided as part of the site development. So that was on those numbers? Uh, that is uh, 456 subparagraph C. <coughs> 456. Yep. What was it? C. C is in Charlie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the seventh page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to count. Also I don't think I'm getting the right number on here, this. Here, do you want me to? There's also here, something man. on page 15 that addresses it too. <coughs> Surface water drainage and snow removal. Chair, per John, Chairperson, Puffin. Yes. If, if nothing else with this discussion, I want to add that whenever site plans are reviewed by the city, mm. the city engineer, uh, the city utilities director, 
are very, very much involved in this. That. I mean, they have experience there. And we, you know, we ran into that recently, and it had to actually do with the county jail site plan. Sure, yeah. And, you know, that had to be revised by them because of specifically that issue. issue. So bear in mind, it's not just this commission, but our city engineer, our city utilities director, uh, the individuals who deal with this for years and years and years, they actually participate in preliminary meetings with developers, et cetera, et cetera. That's it. Great. Right. So it's just part of the puzzle that's automatic. Part of what we do. There. Okay. You okay yet with stuff, Bob? Yeah. Okay. Good. Any other comments this evening by... No. Okay. Is everybody happy with changes? Now, do we need changes in place for doing stuff? I figure that's already in the process, uh, like page numbers and stuff. <laughs> but, um, we can approve it with the... Or we can approve it with the changes we've discussed, if the board is ready or not. I'm just looking for guidance. Mm -hmm. Maybe ask them to review the changes that they that we asked for before we ask make a motion. Before we make a motion. So the only the only um, the only change that I've noted, although I I let me go back in terms of setback variation, there was no change that was noted. Um, just to comment regarding the limiting factors of sub of uh, forty six six fifty five subparagraph B one and two. And then the only other um, uh, change uh, or comment with respect to uh, the setback um, variation has to do with uh, the right-of-way um, clarification under... Yeah, uh, 46655A, yeah. One through five in section F. Yeah. Yeah, under forty six six fifty five. B one and two. Uh, no, that's um, B one and two is all. Well, what you advise should be in there for legal reasons. We're going back to that part A, right? So you're going back to with the state trunk line measurement. Correct. Under 46.655. A1. A1. And then um, the other descriptions from roadways, um, changing that from property line to road right of way. Okay. And adding page number. And we were okay with the adding of structures outside the property that George had requested the L. Yeah, showing on the sketch plan um, structures located within uh, 300 feet of the subject property line, I don't have a problem with at all. <laughs> okay. 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 Board okay with these changes? and verbiage. Yes. Would the board entertain voting on this yet this evening? Okay. I'd entertain a motion. Somebody will. I'm looking at you. 
um, I'll go ahead and make a motion to um, accept the proposed amendment to the City of Cadillac Zoning Ordinance, which would add a mixed plan unit development zoning district uh, with the requested updates. So the, the motion should be to recommend approval of the zoning ordinance amendment, or sorry, the um, MPUD uh, proposed zoning amendment as amended. That's my motion. Thank you, sir. Do I have a second from someone? Support. Oh, sorry. Support. Mr. Gregg. Roll call, please. Schichtel? Yes. Bent? Smith? Yes. Filkins? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Van Lente? Champlin? Greg? Yes. Putfin? Yes. Motion passes. Wonderful. Thank you, Mike. Uh, there being no new business this evening, there being uh, no tabled items, any board member comments? Got all your turkeys and stuff? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, any board member comments? No? Okay. There being uh, no additional communications? Public. Any comments? It's open to you. No? Everybody's got their turkeys, too. Perfect. Okay. Uh, there being no other business, thank you all for coming. We're out.